Hello and welcome to our webinar. I'm Nick Searle, Chief Engineer with Titus, and over the next 35 minutes or so, I will be discussing VAV diffusers and how to design them into an HVAC system. At the end of the presentation, we will open the discussion to any questions that you may have and will attempt to answer them, so feel free to submit those questions at any time during the webinar. In this first section, I will cover the basics of VAV diffusers, how they work, the types of application to which they are best suited, and the basics of the system design. Later in the presentation, I will discuss the three different VAV diffuser technologies available on the market and for which applications they are best suited. While some of you may not be too familiar with VAV diffusers, I'm sure most of you have worked with conventional VAV systems at some point in your careers. For me, it was the first system I worked with straight out of college when I started working life as a noise control engineer way back in the late 1980s. Despite newer HVAC systems being introduced in the last decade or so, VAV is still the most commonly used system for large North American buildings. Variable air volume systems tend to be installed into a building in three separate components. A VAV box that regulates the airflow to the space, a ceiling diffuser or wall grill to distribute conditioned air into the space, a thermostat and controls that adjust the VAV box air damper. Each set of components control the space temperature of a specific zone in the building, referred to as thermal zones. A thermal zone is not necessarily a single room. In fact, in order to save costs, thermal zones will often include several rooms that have a similar heat gain and loss, which means that only one of the rooms within the zone will be fitted with a user-adjustable thermostat. This slide shows the basic components of a conventional VAV system. The air handling unit is typically fitted with a variable frequency drive which adjusts the speed of the fan blower. System pressure increases when the VAV boxes start to close in response to lower room loads. The static pressure sensor detects a pressure change and the fan speed is reduced to maintain a constant pressure, which saves fan energy. The VAV boxes deliver cooling or heating air into multiple diffusers controlled by the thermostat located in one of the rooms. So with only one room in the thermal zone being fitted with a thermostat, a comfort compromise has to be accepted and the room occupants are left to debate who gets to set the temperature. There are a couple of other issues with conventional VAV. During reduced cooling loads, the VAV box will start to close, reducing the airflow to the diffusers. This reduces the diffuser neck and slot velocity, which reduces the diffuser's ability to mix the cold supply air with the surrounding room air. In extreme situations, the jet velocity leaving the diffuser may not be high enough to maintain the ceiling or coanda effect causing the cold air to fall off the ceiling onto the room occupants, which can be quite uncomfortable if you're sat immediately below the diffuser. VAV boxes also consume fan energy. Most VAV systems are designed with around half to an inch of static pressure upstream of the VAV box. The electrical fan energy used to produce this system pressure is wasted due to the pressure drop across the VAV box. So let's take a look at a VAV diffuser and its basic components. All VAV diffusers consist of a diffuser back pan and face, a control disc or a damper to regulate the airflow, which is powered by a mechanical or electrical actuator. This version also features a Venturi tube which draws room air into the temperature sensor in the core of the diffuser. So a VAV diffuser essentially combines a VAV box, diffuser and controls into a single packaged unit. 
VAV diffusers are variable geometry diffusers, meaning that as the air control damper moves, the dimensions of the supply air outlet change. This has a beneficial effect on air distribution during part load conditions. As the demand for cooling air reduces, the damper will start to close but the exit air velocity remains more or less the same, unlike a conventional diffuser. This means that the throw characteristics do not change by much with reduced airflow. This is a good thing because it also means that the Air Diffusion Performance Index, or ADPI, remains high at all airflow conditions. For those not familiar with ADPI, it's a rating that gives an indication of thermal comfort in the room. The higher the ADPI number, the more comfortable the space will feel for most people. With conventional diffusers, the room ADPI reduces with airflow rate. So VAV diffusers offer a comfort improvement during low load conditions with virtually no risk of dumping. This lab video shows the air distribution pattern of a VAV diffuser with smoke injected into the airstream. In this first clip, the damper is 100% open, flowing 350 CFM of air. You can see that the air distribution pattern appears normal, with a high exit velocity. This second clip was taken with the damper set at 25% open, delivering 150 CFM to the space. Notice that although the smoke stream is less dense, the exit air velocity appears similar to when the damper was fully open, and the throw reaches all the way to the back wall. VAV diffuser systems are designed in a similar manner to conventional VAV with just a few minor differences. Generally, the VAV boxes and separate diffusers will be replaced by VAV diffusers, although on larger buildings, a mix of VAV diffusers and conventional boxes are often used. The main differences are in the ductwork distribution system, which should be designed to operate at a lower pressure to avoid excessive noise generation. It is also a pressure dependent system. So poor duct design or inadequate pressure control may affect the room temperature control and noise. Also note that for larger projects, the ductwork should be sized using the static regain method, but I will cover this in some detail later in the presentation. A VAV diffuser system consists of groups of master and drone diffusers with one master per room and as many drones required to meet the room load and air distribution requirements. A room thermostat connects to the master, which sends a control signal to the drones so they all operate in sync. The VAV air handling unit can be fitted with a variable frequency drive and a static pressure sensor tapped into the main duct, so the fan speed can be reduced when the pressure in the main ductwork increases as the VAV diffuser dampers start to close. This setup is no different than a conventional VAV system. VAV diffuser systems can also be designed with a constant volume air handling unit, although the ductwork must be fitted with some means to bypass excess air into the return ductwork. The primary advantage a VAV diffuser system has over conventional VAV is that every room in the building can be fitted with adjustable thermostats without having to install a separate set of DDC controls. This can save energy as individual room control avoids overcooling or heating. Energy consumption can also be reduced with a lower pressure ductwork design. System pressure can typically be reduced by around half an inch water column compared to conventional VAV, which can reduce the fan BHP by over 10% for a typical system. For many applications, a VAV diffuser system can be installed at a lower first cost than a conventional VAV system, especially for buildings with a high number of rooms such as commercial offices. 
Distribution ductwork is less complicated, so ductwork savings of around 15% can be expected. But the majority of the savings can be gained through reduced controls costs, as a VAV diffuser and thermostat is around one third of the cost of a VAV box with DDC controls. Clearly these savings over conventional VAV will be more apparent for buildings where the owner requires a thermostat for every single space. On the other hand, large open plan buildings where a conventional VAV box could serve up to 10 diffusers, VAV diffusers are likely to be more expensive. For buildings being designed to the LEED 4 standard, the thermal comfort point can be obtained by meeting ASHRAE standard 55 which specifies conditions for acceptable thermal comfort. The building must also be designed so that individual thermal comfort controls are provided for at least 50% of individual occupant spaces. This single thermal comfort lead point will be quite costly to obtain with a conventional VAV system as every other room would have to be fitted with a VAV box and DDC controls. VAV diffusers are not a new concept. The first diffusers appeared on the market some 40 years ago. These original diffusers were mechanically operated with an air control damper actuated by a pot of wax, which expands or contracts in response to room temperature. While simple in operation, these mechanical designs have some limitations in that they are slow to respond to changes in temperature and have a wide cooling to heating deadband. Wall thermostats were also not available. So a service tech armed with a screwdriver and ladder had to be called in to adjust the temperature set points. Hardly convenient. The good news is that VAV diffuser development has come a long way since. Modern VAV diffusers feature digital controls offering faster response times and more accurate temperature control. There are now more thermostat choices, including wall-mounted and wireless versions. The more sophisticated systems feature computer control interfaces with full BMS integration, which can be used to set up the system and make room set point adjustments remotely, just like a modern conventional VAV system. And some of the latest VAV diffuser designs are powered by ambient light, so do not even require external power cabling. So where are VAV diffusers typically used? They can be used in just about any application. The most common applications include commercial office buildings, medical office buildings and higher education buildings. They can also be a good solution for upgrading existing constant volume systems or to replace the old variable volume temperature or VVT systems. Designed correctly, VAV diffuser systems are relatively quiet and are suitable for most office and educational facilities. However, applications with stringent noise criteria, such as recording studios, are not suitable for VAV diffusers, as unlike conventional VAV boxes, secondary silencers cannot be installed downstream of the VAV damper. They are best suited to building layouts like this, where the building perimeter consists of numerous small private rooms. A VAV diffuser system can also be reconfigured very easily. Zone changes can be made by simply adding or removing thermostats. So for example, in this corner office, which is fitted with two VAV diffusers controlled by a single thermostat, if the owner divides this into two smaller offices, the drone diffuser can be converted to a master unit by simply fitting a thermostat. In this next section, we will discuss some of the design aspects of a VAV diffuser system. Firstly, there are several design approaches that can be taken depending on the particular application and budget. 
These are the three most common. For smaller buildings or budgets, a system consisting of packaged rooftop constant volume air handlers with DX coils and return air bypass ducts are often used. For larger buildings and budgets, variable volume air handlers with chilled water cores can be used. These systems are designed in a similar fashion to conventional VAV systems. And lastly, partial retrofit. This is for applications where some areas of the building are experiencing temperature control issues. VAV diffusers can be integrated into existing CV or VAV systems with a return air bypass or some other means to relieve system pressure when the VAV diffuser dampers start to close. One of the most important aspects of a VAV diffuser system design is the ductwork. Overall, the ductwork design requires a little more effort and care than a conventional VAV system. The duct system pressure must be controlled as system pressures above around a quarter of an inch behind the diffusers may lead to unacceptable room noise levels. There are two common duct sizing methods used for VAV diffusers, equal friction or static regain. Equal friction is a method most engineers are familiar with. Equal friction simply means that the ductwork is sized with an equal pressure loss along the entire duct length. It's quick and often done using ductulator type tools. One important thing to note is that the system's static pressure will reduce as the air progresses through the ductwork. Alternatively, the static regain approach ensures that the static pressure will be equal along the entire duct runout length, which reduces the possibility of excessive noise generation at the diffusers. Technically speaking, this is the best approach for a VAV diffuser system. But note that the equal friction method can produce great results, especially if the runouts are kept as simple as possible and designed with low loss fittings. The static regain method is recommended for larger systems with long duct runouts and more complex duct routes. The static regain method, as its name implies, simply regains static pressure lost due to frictional losses from the ductwork and fittings. The total pressure in the ductwork, TP, equals velocity pressure plus the static pressure. So by reducing the velocity pressure, static pressure is regained. This is accomplished by simply reducing the air velocity in the duct. This results in an equal pressure along the entire duct length. This duct sizing technique can take longer to perform than the equal friction method, but there are software tools to help speed up this process. This Excel based tool is designed to help size the diffuser ductwork runouts and calculate the total and static pressures at every point along the duct length so the engineer can adjust the duct sizes to obtain a constant static pressure along the entire runout. The software includes a database of the most commonly used duct fittings, such as bends and reducers. As mentioned earlier, pressure control is an important aspect of the system design. There are some products available to help with this. The duct branches off the main risers can be pressure controlled using a purpose-built pressure control terminal unit. By installing these upstream from the diffusers, system pressure behind the diffusers is held constant, so that pressure variations in the main duct risers will not affect room temperature control. Pressure control boxes come complete with a pressure tap that should be inserted two-thirds of the way downstream of the unit. The actuator controller requires just a 24 volt power supply, so is low cost and easy to install. The same type of unit can also be used as a pressure control bypass device. This is particularly useful for designing VAV diffusers into a constant volume system. As the VAV diffuser dampers start to close during low load conditions, the pressure control unit relieves the excess air pressure into the return duct. 
So here's an example of a ductwork layout that was converted from conventional VAV to a VAV diffuser system. It's interesting to see how the layout can be less complicated with a VAV diffuser system design. In this example, the VAV boxes are located here. By converting this layout to VAV diffusers, the VAV boxes are eliminated and the new ductwork layout, shown by the red line, is less complicated, as the VAV box zoning is not dictating the ductwork layout. This is a slightly different design process. Starting off with laying out the diffusers onto the plans, then plotting the ductwork in straight lines back to the risers. Overall, the duct system should be designed with reducing pressure loss in mind. There are several things that can be done to help with this. For example, limiting the length of flexible ducts to 5 feet or less on the diffuser runouts. This will also avoid excessive noise generation at the diffuser. The airflow conditions entering the diffuser should be as uniform as possible. Ideally, there should be some straight ductwork between the bend and the diffuser. But in the real world, this is rarely possible. So we always recommend fitting a flexible duct elbow support like this to improve airflow conditions and reduce noise. Attention should also be given to junctions and branches. The junction on the right is referred to in the ASHRAE duct fitting database as a smooth radius Y. This has a significantly lower loss coefficient than the junction on the left. In this next section we will look at a couple of the most common methods to incorporate heating into a VAV diffuser system. This first method employs hydronic heating cores fitted to the ductwork serving the perimeter VAV diffusers. During the spring and fall seasons, one side of the building may require cooling, while another may require heating. In this simple example, heating cores are fitted into each of the four perimeter exposures. However, more may be desirable depending on the building layout, shape and the loads. The coils can be controlled by the BMS, which when integrated into a VAV diffuser network can read the room temperatures from the stats on each of the master diffusers. A voting control strategy can be used to decide which and when each heater is energised. This heating strategy is best suited to larger projects with a budget for a building automation system. For smaller buildings or retrofit applications, diffuser mounted electric heater coils can be used. These heaters are energised by the VAV diffuser integrated controls, so no additional thermostats or programming are required. Heating capacities of up to 2 kW are available. In this next section, I will discuss some aspects to consider when retrofitting VAV diffusers into existing systems. VAV diffusers are often used to solve temperature control issues by adding a sub-control zone into an existing constant volume or VAV system. It's important to note that some means of system pressure relief should also be fitted to avoid noise complaints that may occur when the diffuser damp is closed to reduce airflow. Pressure relief can be accomplished using electronic or mechanical dampers. In this example, a pressure control unit is used in the bypass setting. The pressure relief air can be bypassed into the ceiling plenum or better still, bypass directly into the return ductwork to save energy and prevent any bypassed air from short-circuiting back into the room via the ceiling transfer grills. Alternatively, mechanical pressure relief dampers are available in various formats including relief rings attached to the rear of the diffusers 
or barometric dampers, which feature an adjustable pressure setting by moving the position of the counterweight along the length of the control arm. In this final section, we will take a closer look at the VAV diffuser technologies available on the market, how they work, and for what applications they are best suited. There are generally three types of VAV diffusers offered by manufacturers. While they may all have a similar appearance, the differences are in how they are powered. The version on the left is a thermally powered diffuser, which uses a wax pill to move the actuator. This is the oldest type of design on the market. The digital diffuser shown in the centre is fully electronic and relies on wiring to carry the power and communication signals across the diffuser network. This system offers the most features of the three types. And the unit on the right represents the latest development in VAV diffuser technology in that it is completely wireless in both communications and power. It essentially combines the best of the other two diffuser types, the accuracy of digital technology with the convenience and cost saving benefits of wireless operation. So let's take a look at a thermal unit first. Thermal diffusers do not require external power and are installed by simply connecting to the air supply and fitted into a suspended ceiling. The unit shown here is a typical example of a thermal diffuser. It has a plaque face and a 360 degree directional airflow pattern. The heart of this diffuser is a mechanical actuator containing the expanding wax element which moves the air control disc up and down to regulate the supply airflow. The heating and cooling set points can be adjusted using the colour coded rings and tabs. The blue ring adjusts the room set point temperature while the green tab adjusts the heating to cooling offset. The room air is drawn into the diffuser through a venturi tube and across a wax pill sensor which ensures an accurate space temperature reading. Note that wall stats are not available for this particular diffuser model. These diffusers have the lowest initial costs and tend to be used on smaller projects with tighter budgets. Electronic digital diffusers were the next generation in VAV diffuser technology and were introduced around 15 years ago. These products are a more complete system and were designed from the ground up as a replacement to conventional VAV, offering many of the features of a modern DDC controlled VAV system. These systems were designed for larger projects requiring modern features such as BMS integration. This slide shows an exploded view of a wired digital diffuser showing the control disc the stepper motor, the control board, and the wall mounted stat. What separates this system from the other diffusers discussed is the master communication module, which is the gateway to the building management system. This expands the features way beyond that of basic VAV diffusers. A system in its most simple format starts with a single diffuser and a power supply module. Up to 15 diffusers can be daisy chained together with 4 pin minifit connectors to a single power supply, which can be any combination of master or drone diffusers. This basic system you see here can be configured as a standalone or BMS integrated system. If a standalone system is chosen, it can be set up using a laptop and USB accessory dongle which connects the PC to the wall stat. The master and zone droning can then be configured using the setup software loaded on the laptop. 
A master diffuser is always connected to a wall thermostat or the onboard temperature controller, which utilises a room temperature sensor in the centre of the diffuser. This system is easily scalable for any size of building. Multiple power modules must be used when the diffuser quantities exceed 15. To create a communication network for the diffusers, a master communication module, or MCM, is used. An MCM has four communication ports which link to the power modules. So with a maximum of 15 diffusers per power supply, up to 60 diffusers can be connected to a single MCM. The master communication module is the connection point to the building management system, which facilitates tasks such as centralised zone monitoring and remote room temperature set point adjustments. Note that as a single BMS connection point can communicate with up to 60 diffusers, the overall controls costs are significantly reduced compared to other systems which require a BMS control point per VAV box or master diffuser. The VAV diffuser system can be integrated into any BMS that uses BACnet IP, BACnet MSTP or Longworks communication standards. The master communication module is also available as a standalone option which is useful for smaller projects that do not have the budget for a full BMS. The standalone option relies on the software that is provided with the VAV diffusers for centralised control of the system. A snapshot of this software is shown on this slide. This software serves two purposes. Firstly, it is used to configure the master and drones. A plan of the building layout is imported into the software and the VAV diffusers appear over the top where they can be moved around to their correct locations. Each diffuser has a unique address which is marked on every single diffuser. The master and drones can be linked by simply drawing a line between them to create a thermal zone. This software can also serve as a centralised control hub for the entire system. So if the building does not have a BMS, the software enables facilities engineers to remotely adjust set points, close down thermal zones and monitor the room conditions by using the data logging feature shown here. These diffusers are available in a number of configurations, including a plaque style in four neck sizes, a linear slot in 24 to 60 inch lengths, and a sidewall unit in 16 sizes. Some of these can be specified with options such as electric inlet heaters and pressure relief rings. Overall, a wired digital system offers the most control options and features of all the VAV diffuser types. It is a little more costly to install due to the wiring, but it is ideal for projects where the owner is looking for a lower cost alternative to conventional VAV, but with many of its features. Finally, I will briefly discuss the latest innovation in VAV diffusers, a wireless digital version powered by ambient light. A photovoltaic cell is fitted to the centre of the diffuser face which harvests light energy from the room which is converted to electrical energy to power the unit. The same concept has been used for decades in many consumer electronics such as calculators and watches but is now appearing more frequently in buildings, for example bathroom faucets. The diffuser will not just operate in the perimeter rooms with windows, it can be fitted into interior rooms and powered by artificial lighting. In fact, only around 120 lux is required to power the unit. Most interior offices are significantly brighter than this. This auto changeover diffuser is equipped with two temperature sensors, a supply air sensor to detect if the system is in heating or in cooling, 
and a room air temperature sensor. The harvested energy is stored in a capacitor on the control board. If the office lights are turned off for extended periods, the diffuser will switch to a sleep mode to conserve power. The capacitor stores the energy for up to four weeks so the diffuser can return to normal operation when the room is occupied and the lights are turned on. The temperature settings are adjusted in one of two ways, using the onboard adjusters or an optional wireless thermostat. The control board adjusters set the room temperature, cooling to heating dead band, and the minimum damper position. The wireless thermostat is available separately as an add-on accessory. This is also powered by ambient light and paired to the diffuser using a postmaster. The postmaster serves as a communications router connecting one thermostat with up to 10 diffusers by carrying out a simple pairing procedure using the buttons on the router, thermostat and diffuser. The postmaster is powered by plugging into a standard 120 volt wall outlet. A completely wireless digital diffuser system offers numerous benefits the most obvious being significantly reduced installation costs, as the system can be installed by the mechanical contractor without the need for controls or electrical contractors' involvement. These wireless VAV diffusers are also a good solution in retrofit applications, helping solve temperature control issues in problem areas of the building. And they are ideal for building layouts like this where most of the building is open plan with a small number of private offices in the interior. The private offices can be fitted with a wireless diffuser and thermostat. The ductwork serving the VAV diffusers is tapped off the main ducts and pressure control dampers are installed between the main duct and the VAV diffusers. The open plan office areas can be served with conventional VAV boxes.